Welcome to Air Explorers, where we journey through history to uncover fascinating tales and insights. On today's episode, the epic rise and fall of Julius Caesar. Few stories in history are as compelling and consequential as that of Julius Caesar. His ambition, vanity, political savvy, and military brilliance irrevocably transformed the Roman Republic. Caesar rose to unprecedented power, crowned dictator perpetuo, before being assassinated by rivals fearful of his supremacy. His life traces an epic arc from noble birth to dictatorship to bloody demise on the Senate floor. Born in 100 BC, Caesar came from aristocratic roots, claiming ancestry dating back to the Trojan prince Aeneas. He received elite education in rhetoric and philosophy, and quickly demonstrated great tactical instincts in the military. Early political advancement put Caesar at odds with dictator Sulla, forcing a period of exile until Sulla's death. Returning to Rome, Caesar adeptly climbed the political ladder, aligning himself with powerful figures like Crassus and Pompey. He leveraged connections and wealth from military victories to become consul, then proconsul governing parts of Gaul and Illyricum. In 58 BC, Caesar left Rome to begin his decade-long conquest of Gaul. This expanded the Republic's reach while fulfilling Caesar's personal ambition. Annual campaigns against Celtic tribes burnished his reputation back home through propaganda highlighting his skills. Meanwhile, the Senate grew uneasy with Caesar's rising power. After eight years pacifying Gaul, political rivals ordered Caesar to resign his command and disband his veteran army upon returning to Rome. Their aim was rendering him powerless, but Caesar refused in famously leading his loyal legion across the Rubicon into Italy in 49 BC, igniting a devastating civil war and triggering the Republic's end. Initially outnumbered, Caesar repeatedly outmaneuvered enemies using speed and cunning. The victory against the Republican forces of Pompey and Metellus Scipio made Caesar dictator, granting him unprecedented power. He instituted popular reforms to win public favor. But from 48 to 44 BC, Caesar still battled enemies across the Mediterranean. It was Ptolemy Xii and Cleopatra's joint rule of Egypt that proved most problematic, drawing Caesar into their dynastic civil war. Besieged in Alexandria, Caesar's legendary affair with Cleopatra began, ensuring him control of Egypt. After returning to Rome victoriously, Caesar continued consolidating power. He was made dictator for life and accumulated offices and privileges alarming the old guard. Rumors swirled that Caesar aimed to make himself king, destroying Rome's republican traditions. Amid growing discontent, on March 15, 44 BC, a band of 60 senators conspired to assassinate Caesar. Despite omens of impending doom, he walked into the Senate where they stabbed him 23 times. Caesar fell at the feet of Pompey's statue, ironically killed by prodigies he had pardoned. In the power vacuum following Caesar's murder, civil war erupted again, pitting his hair Octavian against Mark Antony and Republican holdouts. By 27 BC, Octavian ruled Rome as its first emperor. But the Republic was gone, its institutions too weakened to resurrect. So what is Caesar's legacy? Most acclaim his military and administrative genius. Many Romans viewed him as a savior in a time of crisis. But Republicans considered Caesar a tyrant who brought Rome's destruction. Shakespeare wrote Caesar's ambition should be made of sterner stuff. Perhaps it consumed Caesar in the end. Regardless, his life story is epic. To fully understand Caesar's rise and demise, we must begin with the late Roman Republic in turmoil, ripe for ambitious men to seize power. For over 400 years, Rome expanded via conquest while retaining Republican rule. But factionalism between populares, optimates, and boundless generals like Marius, Sulla, Crassus, and Pompey destabilized old institutions. Rome's vast reach required strong governors able to levy legions abroad, but commands were term-limited, prompting leaders to seek extensions to avoid prosecutions back home. Longer governorships became expected, letting generals amass loyal armies and use military fame to gain political influence. Caesar emerged in this tumultuous climate, an expert at navigating shifting alliances. His diplomatic skills forged critical partnerships, 
often sealed through strategic marriages. But growing allegiance of Caesar's armies was most concerning to senators in Rome. As proconsul and commander in Gaul, Caesar expertly mixed diplomacy with swift violence to expand Rome's reach and his own reputation. His commentaries on the Gallic Wars reveal a vibrant personality able to inspire soldiers. Caesar also bribed key officials and used propaganda to sway public opinion in his favor. Back in Rome, Caesar navigated complex Republican politics, courting popular support through spectacle. His accumulation of power and seeming arrogance turned elements of the Senate against him. But ordinary Romans appreciated Caesar's reforms and charisma, even deifying him after his death. Caesar's assassination on the Ides of March has echoed through history as an archetypal moment. Was killing Caesar justified tyrannicide, political necessity, or simply jealousy manifesting as treason? Opinions remain mixed, but contemporaries were shocked that supposed loyalists were his murderers. In many ways, Caesar created his own destiny through ruthless ambition, tactical brilliance, and populist reforms as dictator. But he also fell victim to Republican rivals and a political system unwilling to bend. Caesar's life shows how individuals shape history, yet also become captive to forces beyond control. His legacy endures as both the conqueror who built an empire and the tyrant destroyed defending a republic. The seeds of Caesar's ambition were planted early in life. As a youth, he escaped Sulla's persecution by fleeing Rome and joining the military, where he earned valuable battle experience. Caesar absorbed Greek and Eastern culture during this exile, which later factored into his more cosmopolitan worldview. Returning to Rome, Caesar became known as a skilled orator and lawyer willing to prosecute corrupt officials. This populist positioning helped launch his political career. Caesar was voted Pontifex Maximus as Rome's chief priest and later elected praetor and consul. But Caesar needed military glory, wealth, and influence to advance further. An appointment as praetor governing Spain from 61 to 60 BC allowed him to conquer new territories and pay off crippling debts. This governorship whetted Caesar's appetite for extended commands. The first triumvirate with Crassus and Pompey enabled Caesar to secure five-year control of Cisalpine Gaul. Later, the Senate extended this to all of Gaul in the hope it would end his influence. Instead, conquering Gaul greatly expanded Caesar's power for the fateful showdown with the Republic. Caesar's years in Gaul revealed his strengths as a commander. He inspired loyalty in legionnaires, some following him for decades. Skilled diplomacy co-opted tribes. When needed, Caesar ruthlessly punished those who defied Rome. After the bloody Gallic Wars ended in 51 BC, Gaul was fully conquered, altering Europe's future. While Caesar was expanding Rome's borders, Pompey remained influential back home. Their alliance deteriorated amid status rivalry. Optimate forces in the Senate promoted Pompey while obstructing Caesar, but neither wanted direct confrontation given Caesar's hardened legions. Curtailing Caesar's power emerged as the Senate's goal. They ordered him to resign his command and disband his veteran army before returning to Rome unprotected. Caesar's refusal led to the crossing of the Rubicon into Italy on January 10, 49 BC. The die was cast. Civil war engulfed Rome, but Caesar's organizational genius prevailed. Clever tactics like masking troop movements and targeting enemy supply chains outpaced larger Republican forces. Within six months, Caesar was victorious and named dictator. Caesar governed as an enlightened yet unapologetic autocrat. He centralized control, bricks over institutions. Caesar imposed order using loyal subordinates, given power that weakened the Senate but his popularized reforms and grand displays won public admiration in Rome. By showing mercy to former enemies, Caesar attempted to heal divisions. But pockets of dissent remained among Republican traditionalists alarmed by Caesar's ambitions. His apparent monarchical aspirations created growing rifts with longtime allies. In 44 BC, Caesar prepared for a major eastern campaign against Parthia. Consolidating power as dictator perpetuo likely aimed to ensure stability while he was away. But to nervous senators, this confirmed Caesar's despotism. 
It set the stage for assassination by dozens of Roman elites, some of whom Caesar had pardoned earlier. Caesar's sudden murder at the height of power and popularity made him a martyr. Ordinary citizens were enraged, attacking the assassins' homes. Caesar's adopted son Octavian shrewdly used public animosity to eventually defeat Republican forces. Rome's civil wars ended only with the empire's founding. Caesar's life traced a meteoric arc from charismatic consul to victorious general to unrivaled dictator. But he also personified the turbulent late Republic era, when institutions calcified while ambition flourished. Perhaps Caesar was destined to either rule the changing empire or be destroyed defending the fading Republic. Regardless, his eventful life rings epic even today. So, was Caesar's assassination inevitable due to his ambition? Could Rome have retained its government had Caesar shown restraint? We can debate these questions eternally. But Caesar endures as one of history's most towering yet polarizing figures, capable of seizing unmatched power through brilliance, yet unable to anticipate betrayal by peers. Julius Caesar came, saw, and conquered, before the very system he sought to control brought his dramatic downfall. Yet Caesar had the last laugh, his murder only cementing his legacy. Rome was forever transformed. Share with us your favorite moment from today's episode in the comments, and if there's a specific event, era, or individual you'd like us to explore, let us know. If you enjoyed this exploration, be sure to join the Era Explorers community by hitting the subscribe button. We drop new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Together, let's unravel the tales and mysteries of our shared past. See you in the next episode.